Hey, Miss Hog. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How are you doing today? Is your week going okay so far? I know it's just Monday, but you know how Mondays can be sometimes. <laughs> Has it been a mad Monday? Has it been a fun Monday? <laughs> Let me put this link in the chat before we get started. Let's see, where did I... Oh, I didn't press the back button. I'm going to put the link to our Facebook group in the chat. Oh, you just got home? I've been at home all day. I've been working from home today. But as soon as I get off this live, I have to go to the store because my son done decorated the entire Christmas tree by himself today. And he did a wonderful, wonderful job. He didn't even select the tree at the store. <laughs> Like the store, um, we went to go buy a tree from Walmart because the tree we had is it was like on its last, last, last everlasting leg. And so uh we had to pick out another tree. And they my Walmart had these black trees that he wanted. And I'm like, black son, black, you want a black tree, son. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with the green tree? And I, I, I really don't like white trees. I really don't. I don't know. Don't ask me why. It has nothing to do with what some of y'all might think. White, black, green. you know what I'm saying? I just don't like white trees. Um, I like. I prefer green trees. And he wanted a black tree. So the man who who was um working in that department, he heard us, overheard us talking. And he was like, oh, that's the popular thing left. If y'all want a black tree, y'all better hope it's something left because um, them things been selling like crazy. And I was like, that's all I had to hear. Okay, get a boy black tree. <laughs> so we can be popular. <laughs> we got a black tree. But anyway, he came home yesterday and decorated the windows, the front windows of the house by himself. I mean, he was just in a, this is a 17 year old y'all. <laughs> and it snowed here, mind you. We had a snowstorm. That's why I didn't do the sisters from another Mr. Um, movie YouTube review the other day because it had snow. And my sister friend, Samantha, she didn't want to risk getting out the house trying to come to me to record. So we're postponing that till next week. But anywho, so he had to shovel snow that morning um sunday morning and then right after that he went to decorating the lights in the front of the house and came inside and put up the tree i'm like what is this boy trying to do i think he's trying to get something really expensive from me from christmas that's what i'm believing <laughs> that's what i'm believing but anywho so um I have to go to the store after this live so we can pick up a few more things like we need an angel for the top of the tree and you know stuff like that but anywho y'all what y'all think about uh the housewives of atlanta the last episode hey kal hey kim on instagrams ain't you at a basketball game <laughs> or is the game over and did they win i saw you post on facebook the a few minutes ago well i just got the notification a few minutes ago that you were um at a basketball game. But I hope they win. Is it is it Monty or is it your son? Or I don't know who's playing. But anyway, good luck to them. I hope they win. <laughs> but um yes, Miss Hogg, I'm sorry, you probably didn't get the uh notification that I put on YouTube a few days ago. I made a video saying it was uh canceled because of inclement weather. So yeah, we're in Omaha and we had a snowstorm. Like what day was that? It started raining and then sleeting Saturday night. And then after midnight, it turned into snow. And that night, Saturday night, we were supposed to do the review, but it had started sleeting and raining and icing up. So she stayed home. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I'd rather she stays at home than get in an accident trying to get here just to do a YouTube review <laughs> or have to spend the night because <laughs> she was scared to drive home. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so it's postponed till next week, next week. 
Well, actually not next week, but you know, this weekend. But um yeah, I checked out the Atlanta Housewife um uh the last episode that came on last night, which was season eleven, episode five, and it was titled Tatted Tales. So y'all tell me what y'all thought about this um last episode. I mean, it had me going from I don't know. It was like a high and low episode for me. I mean, it was times when I was like cracking the mess up and times when I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, these ladies is making me bipolar <laughs> from this episode, but it was a really good episode. Nonetheless, um, it started off with uh, Portia. And her man, Dennis, I'm on YouTube, y'all, and Facebook, by the way. Those, I mean, not Facebook, but Instagram. Those of y'all on Instagram, you can also join me on my live at YouTube. Tanya Knows No Limit and Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. And those of you on YouTube, my uh, Instagram is Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. So make sure you follow me on both um, platforms. But yeah, they started off with Portia and her man, Dennis. You know, they was puffing away at a hookah lounge, um, you know, waiting for her mom to arrive so she can finally meet her match made in heaven. At least that's what Portia seems to believe. That's her match made in heaven. Now, I must say that um, this meeting with her mom seemed to have went much better than, you know, when Portia met his mom. Like, when she met his mom, his mom was like, what y'all mean y'all already in love? And what y'all mean it was love at first sight? I mean, I took it as if she really wasn't feeling their relationship, and she definitely wasn't feeling Portia, especially after she gave her that expensive pocketbook, that Louis, after she gave her that expensive pocketbook. So, um, but this episode, when she, when he met her mom, her mom was like, oh my God, I'm so happy she found her soulmate. And she wasn't even surprised about them getting matching tattoos since they haven't even been dating that long. Um, I'm beginning to see why Portia acts the way she does. <laughs> no shade to Mom Dukes, but Mom Dukes think that Dennis is the one, like the one. So whatever everybody else is saying, is neither here nor there. And speaking of what nobody else has to say about Dennis, they next go to Candy. <laughs> what you say, Miss Hall? His mom not feel uh uh not at all, <laughs> not at all. And you know what? As far as Portia, um, mom feeling him, I think she more feels the relationship, not necessarily him. I think she's just happy that Portia's not single. I mean, that that's what that's the vibes I'm getting from, you know, Mom Dukes. That's what I'm getting. Like it it wouldn't matter who it was, because I think her mom truly just be happy every time she gets in a new relationship. I don't I don't know. That's just y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. <laughs> because she don't really know him. I mean, she don't know him from Adam. She's just so excited that she's in a relationship. So, you know, that's just what I'm getting. But then they went to Candy, Marlo, Cynthia, and Nene. Um, they were meeting up for lunch. And y'all, <laughs> let me know how y'all feel about this. Me personally, I have to agree with Marlo. Like, Cynthia, okay, Cynthia is, like, model body, tall, slim, gorgeous, but a lot of the time she's always dressing like she's a tomboy in Chuck Taylors, you know, ripped jeans. I mean, I'm. Uh, it's not taking away from her beauty. I'm not saying she, you know, but she be downplaying her beauty sometimes. So Marlo, when she told Cynthia, you know what, I'm so glad you gave up the sneakers, you know, today and put on a dress and looking like the sexy model that she is. I did not think it was like shady or whatnot. Cynthia in the green room, she was like, you know what, I'm sorry, but I like my tennis shoes and you know da, da 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 but I think she you know really meant what she said and she wasn't throwing no shade but it was nice to see her you know dressed up again <laughs> but um as far as uh Eva 
Um, remember at the beginning of the season, Eva was like throwing a little shade, you know, when she was hanging out with Portia talking about Cynthia, you know, she's old school. We don't do it like them anymore as far as modeling. She's the grandma modeling. So it's nice to see her, you know, dressing up every now and then. But then eventually they get to Candy. Um, Candy asked them, I don't know why. But she asked them, what advice have y'all given Portia regarding Dennis? I think she was just trying to open up the door. <laughs> open up the door and see if they maybe heard anything about Dennis like she has. Um, but obviously they're they're in the dark. I, I guess they didn't know anything about what you know Candy knows. But she was been waiting to spread, you know, the Dennis gossip to the entire group. So again, she goes on to tell him, you know. Um, I believe he was cheating with Portia, you know, with his la on his last woman, since he and the last woman allegedly just broke up recently. And how he tats all his girlfriend's names on them and buys them all Rolexes, you know, just giving them away, just handing them out like they just cheap toys you'll find in a Happy Meal box. Um, and then Marlo, she's like, okay, they sat and they listened to everything. <laughs> and they thought it over and Marlo was like, okay, I don't think that you should tell Portia anything, anything. Nene is like me though. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me, let me backtrack. Marlo believed that Candy should tell Portia. Let me correct myself. Marlo said that Nene should, that uh, Candy should tell Portia, but Nene is like me. I mean, I didn't have incidences where I didn't told a very, very close friend, like very close, uh, with 100% proof. Because all females say they want to know. They want to know. They want to know. You ain't my girl. You ain't my dog if you don't tell me. Woo, 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 woo. But then when you tell them with 100% proof, they might go back at the dude, argue, fight, break up, to make up. <laughs> get back together and then he doesn't agree with me or whatever the woman is the friend with them being friends again with the girlfriend or the wife and so it happens all the time it happens all the time <laughs> you said that's his model yep 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 <laughs> that's his mo yep that's his mo that's what i meant that's his mo you right miss hall he tattoos they name ain't no telling how many tattoos portia even said this episode i don't know what them tattoos mean for all i know i could be staring at a girl's face every day <laughs> i mean staring at her name you know on his chest because from the tattoo they have you know the matching tattoos on her neck um it was like symbols i don't know what language or what I, I don't know, but it was symbols. It wasn't P-O-R-S-A or how we spell her name. It was like a diamond and some squid. I don't know what symbols it was because, you know, I didn't pay that much attention. But I know it wasn't the English alphabet on her neck. <laughs> so who knows how many tattoos he got of females on his body. But anywho, um, <laughs> that just cracks me up. That just cracks me up. Like you buy every chick a rollie. You tattoo all their names all over your body. Like it's another notch in his belt. You know, I think that's what poor, I think that's what Candy was trying to say. And in a shady roundabout way, I think she really was just wanting to alert Portia, just be careful. But I think it's too late for all that because Portia, she didn't die. She's too far. She's too far gone. So no matter what uh, Candy says, it, I don't think it would matter one bit. But um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, but as far as you know, telling the friends, you know, your man. I didn't see your man hugged up with some chick at the mall. You know, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I don't say nada. Not these days. Not anymore. Nope. I don't say nada. You won't hear from Tanya's mouth that your dude was cheating. And if you were to tell me, I'll be like, oh, really? Really, girl? No, he didn't. No, he did not. That's Tanya. <laughs> these days. But anywho, um, oh my God, uh, Eva's mom. I cannot remember Eva's mom's name. But she wasn't just driving Eva crazy. She was driving me cray-cray as well. Um, 
if I had a mother doing all that, acting all like that, I'm sorry. I might appoint her to usher. <laughs> she might have to be the usher at the wedding. Like, mom, just stand over there on the wall and tell everybody where to sit. And because she was, uh, mm, her mom, forget Bridezilla. She was acting like mother of the Bridezilla. Like, Eva was trying on so many dresses. She tried on umpteen dresses. And her mother didn't like any. And while she was sitting there waiting for her to come out, you know, with the dresses, she was telling, um, I think that was Eva's homegirl or something. Uh, this Eva thinks this is her wedding. This is my wedding. This little does she know. This is my wedding. I was like, what? <laughs> this is your wedding. <laughs> but she didn't like none of those dresses. She is a trip, Miss Hog. I was like, come on now. Come on now, you cannot be serious. Every dress, every dress she tried on, I mean, if it wasn't like the neckline or the bust of the dress, you know, if people who don't know what the bust is, all oh, this up here, uh, which I have a lot of, <laughs> but, um, or the drop waist or the tail, um, she, she just didn't like any of the dresses. And that one dress, y'all, the last one she tried on, I really liked that dress. I really did like that dress, and Eva loved it. Like, she absolutely loved it. But then her mom was like, nope, not that one, because I don't like the tool on the dress. Like, she didn't like the tool on the dress. I'm like, oh, my God, Eva, just please, please just put her out the stove. Just <laughs> save everybody a headache, because I know she wasn't just driving her crazy, but the friend sitting there and, the uh, you know, the lady that was helping her, you know, try on the dresses, she had to have been driving them all crazy. I would have just, Mom, um, don't you got something to do? <laughs> don't you got somewhere to be? <laughs> but anywho, um, after they met up for lunch after that, I felt like, um, I felt like, her mother, you know, she truly was trying to put a, you know, she was truly not trying to put a damper on Eva's spirit, you know, in the excitement of the planning of the wedding, or at least that's what she wanted us to believe. Um, because at first, uh, when they started talking about the wedding and, you know, the guests and everything, Eva's mom was like pissed because she couldn't invite, I guess, some really close friends of hers now her mom was like okay what's three more people you know when it comes to money what's three more people but eva is like it's not like it's hundred dollar seats or hundred dollar plates i don't know what they serving i don't know what they serving but i'm assuming that each meal is worth hundreds of dollars. I don't know if it's steaks or lobster. I don't know what the heck she's serving, but she made it seem like the plate for three more people would be just ridiculously high, you know, to add to the wedding cost. So I, I don't know how I feel about that, but, you know, it is Eva's wedding. It is Eva's wedding. And regardless of who her mama's best friends are, you know, is their wedding. They should invite who they want and not invite who they want, you know, but maybe they, maybe they'll compromise because her mom, you know, she apologized and she was like, um, you know, I really didn't mean for you to cry. And, you know, I didn't mean to upset you and Eva apologized. And, you know, she was like, let's go smoke some hookah daughter. Let's go smoke some hookah and start all over. Can we just start all over? <laughs> So, you know, they, they, they made up, they made up, but y'all, the way her mom was acting, like when Eva tried to explain to her, she just completely shut down. She was sitting there eating her food, talking about, mm, mm, smacking her lips, mm, mm, you know, making all them sounds while Eva's up there, tissue all in, ooh, I wish I had some tissue, she, tissue all in her eyes, and, and then her mom act like she didn't know that she was crying, so then... <laughs> And I don't know if Eva was doing this for theatrics, but she was like, <laughs> you know, started sniffling. Her mom still sat there. She didn't blink. She didn't move. She didn't nod. She just kept eating her food and making them sound like, mmm, mmm, this is, mmm. I was like, oh my God. 
I can picture her mom as being one of those mean... Ooh, hey, y'all know that movie. <laughs> y'all know that movie that I'm talking about? That mean mom with the, uh, why... No, why I hang us? <laughs> but she was like, Mama Dearest, like... I don't know. I don't know how Eva's upbringing was. And she 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 makes it seem like she's really, really close to her mom. But for some reason, her mom just strike me as maybe she was just one of those moms, you know, real mean, real strict growing up. I don't know. She just shut down, like just shut down and said, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. I am done discussing this. I was like, OK, OK, mommy dearest. Okay, this your wedding, this your wedding. <laughs> but anywho, um, then they went over to Ron and Shamari's. <laughs> you said even most, ooh, hoo, hoo. I wasn't even going to mention that, Miss Hog. <laughs> I wasn't even going to mention that. But she must, she must look like her dad. <laughs> or maybe her grandparents or uncles and aunts. Because <laughs> she definitely, definitely don't look like her mama. No shade. No shade. <laughs> but then they went over to uh, Ron and Shamari's house. Y'all, why Ron? Oh, Lord. I Man, I used to be so in love with this man. I'm telling y'all, I used to be so in love with this man when he was in New Edition. Well, he's still part of the group, but you know what I mean. Back in D-Day. Uh, <laughs> but Why? Ron, forgive me. But why do this man sound like he done smoked three pack of Newports a day? Three packs, three, three pack of Newports a day and a half a pack of Black and Miles for the last 25 years. I was like, dang, I know he up there in age. He's about 49, 50 now, but he sound like... <laughs> mm. He sounded like he smokes like three packs of cigarettes a day. I'm like, how you still, when y'all be touring, how you still even sing? I, I don't know. Any, anywho, anywho. But, but, <laughs> when he found out that she revealed on national television that they used to have an open relationship. Now, I'm getting conflicting um responses, like conflicting. I, oh, okay, okay, let me explain. Let me explain. Um, he was kind of upset because she told everybody on the show, um, told all the ladies that they had a relationship, you know, where it was an open situation back in the day. Um, and he's like, why did you feel it was okay to tell him that? I mean, I don't understand why, what you tell them that for? And she's like, no, you know, it, it's, uh, babe, it's really no big deal. I'm not ashamed of my freaky past. I'm not ashamed. But evidently, it brought back a lot of hurt for him. Um, so the way I'm seeing it is that she was getting around a lot more than him back in the day. Uh, even though, this is why I say conflicting, even though last episode, she made it seem like he was the one sleeping around with more females than she was because, you know, she was, um, bi -curious, even though he said you was bi crazy. <laughs> he said you weren't bi -curious, You were bi crazy. Meaning like she must've been out there like, and I'm thinking, dang, he's making it seem like she was trying to get all the fish fillets that she can while she can. Ron was pissed, Miss Hogg. I was like... Dude, he was sitting there like, I mean, his whole demeanor, he, he looked like he wanted to slap the taste out of her mouth. And I'm not saying he looked like a woman beater. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But if he was, she'd be on the floor. She would have been on that floor under the table. <laughs> but um, I know he don't want to want her to talk to, you know, us about that or talk to the ladies about that, you know, on national TV. But I sure wish she would go a little further into details because I, I she's leaving, somebody's leaving something out. Some, she, last episode, she was like, you know, I would be with like a few girls and he would be like, you know, way more girls than me. And then remember uh, that the ladies were teasing her saying, well, if you can't be with a man, but he can be with all these women, that's not fair. You know, that's what happened last episode. So anywho, anywho, but moving right along, um, Nene and Greg. 
Whoosa, Nene and Greg. Um, I must say that only people who have actually had someone close to them suffer and or die from cancer or any terminal disease can truly understand how it feels to try to um always have your best face on you know be so supportive be so positive all the darn time like all the darn time um you know in front of the the patient in front of the person that's sick like when that doctor call and told Greg that they did find some microscopic cancer cells floating around. My heart just sank, y'all. I was like, no, 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 no. Because, mainly because he absolutely was refusing to do chemo. I don't know how he feels now after hearing that devastating news. Um, but you know what? No matter what anybody else believes, it's truly up to Greg. And I'm not going to say I hope he uh, listens to the doctor because chemo, you know, it can really, really, chemo can break you down, like break you down. But, but I also know that generally speaking, being treated by chemo at the early stages of cancer and in his situation where there's barely, hardly a trace of cancer, I mean, they have to use a microscopic cameras inside of him to even find it. A patient like that doesn't have to do chemo as long as somebody else in a much worse stage of cancer. So, you know, we shall see. We shall see. Um, and I'm not no doctor, so don't be taking, don't be taking me, uh, you, hey, I, I didn't have... More than several people in my family died of cancer, including my mom and my grandma, my grandma's sister and my granddad. So I, I didn't have more than a few people in my family die from cancer. So I do know a little bit about it. You know what I'm saying? But always seek your doctor's, you know, advice whenever, you know, you got to take any treatments. So I'm going to just put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> But, um, and again, of course, you know, we all will still, I'm sure we all, we all will continue to keep them in our prayers. But, um, back to the DeVos. They done went all out for the twins for their first birthday party, as they should, at least as I would, because my oldest son, who's 21, um, he had a whole lot of complications from the time he was born. I mean, he had severe asthma to where he couldn't even play sports. <clears throat> couldn't play out in the cold. If it was too high, he couldn't be out in the heat. I mean, until he was like 12, and then he just grew out of it thanks to like three different medications that he had to take every single day for like, mm, probably like three years. Um, and then on top of that, he used to have seizures. And I nobody wanted to babysit him. I mean, not only did we have to have like Breathing treatments at mom's house, grandma's house, my house, daycare. You know, we had like five breathing treatment machines. Everybody had one. <laughs> Everybody had one. And he used to have seizures all the time. And I mean, just other stuff. And then he had uh, tonsillitis all the time. So we had to have his tonsils taken out. This was all before he was like two years old. I mean, just a whole bunch of stuff going on. So at his first birthday party, we turned completely all the way up. The turn up was real. And every year after that was each of my sons, 21 and 17. We had, man, when I say we turn up, we turn up. Check out my um page on Facebook, my Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice uh, Facebook page. Um, where I post all my um, cake work because I'm a custom cake decorator for most of y'all that already know. But um, And look at the party pics. The pics with all the food and the three-tier cake that I made him. Big old huge cake. Um, all the f Oh, man. We turns up every, every year for each of their birthdays. But anyway, um, she was like, Lord, when she went and purchased some cakes... Remember them cakes she purchased? The ones they showed, the the cakes? I was like, oh my God, you know, because from a cake decorator, I'm like, oh my God, them cakes are fabulous. And I'm going to have to give it to them cake decorators because they did a very, very, very nice job on those tiered cakes. And those cakes are worth every bit of $450. 
I mean, to somebody who's not in the cake business, not saying you, Miss Hall, because I saw your comment, you know, $4.50 for each cake. <laughs> but seriously, yeah, I would have charged at least, at least $400 for each of those cakes. Like that stuff around the size, the crown molds and all that. I mean, uh, uh, the, child y'all don't know what all it takes to make a very nice professional custom cake especially tiered cakes tiered cakes cost a lot more than just regular round layer cakes so anywho she, that was about a right price and then she also threw in the smash cakes two smash cakes the ones that have the number ones out of them which is normal for a cake business if you buy a regular size cake for a child's party they usually throw in a free smash cake you know but um how did y'all feel about when Shamari, what she said about Portia? Like, they went to school together from grade school to high school. And at the beginning of the season, didn't it seem like Portia was, like, really, really excited to see that Shamari was on, you know, the Housewives? Like, she was like, oh, yeah, you know, Shamari, yeah, we went to school together. Yeah, I've been knowing her, you know, we grew up in the, you know... But then, like, Shamari is saying, she's treating her like they never, ever, never have met on them Georgia streets before. So what do y'all think that's about? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, last episode when Shamari invited Portia to the party, she was like, uh, you can come to the party too, Portia, even though you don't have no kids, you can bring your niece. Portia says so fast without even thinking she's going to be with her dad. And then fell back laughing, you know. <laughs> and fell back laughing. Since she was like, oh, you, you wrong, you wrong. She didn't even think about it. I'm like, well, that was a bit shady. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> but <laughs> what you say, Miss Hall? It was a nice cake, but I would have ordered one cake. No, no, no. I get you there. I get you there. Because me personally... I don't care how much money I have, but I, I just know me personally, <laughs> with a budget or without a budget, I would have ordered one cake. I would have. I, if it was the twins birthday, I'm with you. I would have ordered one cake for four fifty, and I would have ordered the two smash cakes. But you know, sometimes with these celebrities, they try to, you know, they, it's all for C. It's all for C. It's all for show. That's what I'm trying to say. It's all for show. So I'm pretty sure that's why she ordered two cakes. Not necessarily because it was two birthdays. Because it wasn't even enough there. Um, it wasn't even enough people there to eat all that cake. I mean, that one tiered cake, that one three tiered cake, that cake by itself will feed a hundred some people. So, and I, I just know because I'm a cake decorator and I know how many slices it is in so, such a size cake. So, whatever. You know what I'm saying. But, anywho, uh, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I would have ordered one big three-tier cake and then ordered, you know, got the two smash cakes for free. But, um, what was I about to say? Oh, I'm sorry. But, uh, so, what, how do y'all feel about that? Like, her throwing shade and acting like she don't know Shamari or like she don't want to be bother her, bother with her like that. I'm like... I really don't understand that, but I don't know. I don't know. But let me tell y'all this. That Shamari was definitely about to give it to Eva and get her all the way. She's going to snatch her all the way together about her insinuating that she needs a makeover. Remember that? <laughs> I mean, if her husband, Ronnie, wouldn't have interrupted him talking about uh, 1245, you guys, or 145, whatever it was, um... We gonna be, you know, blowing out the candles, singing happy birthday. Uh, Eva, if she wasn't backtracking, like during the past the peace game, Cynthia specifically said, and I watched it several times. I rewound it because I wanted to make sure what Cynthia said. And what Cynthia has said was, whoever gets that peach has to answer the question or pass it to the person that you think the question refers to. So. She didn't answer the question, and instead, she said, no shade, no shade, and she handed that peach right over to Shamari. Did she not? <laughs> so, I'm like, were you or were you not following directions? I, I don't know. She was like, back, just backpedaling, backpedaling. But anywho, Shamari's about to get her all the way together. She was like, but you know what? 
<laughs> she changed her mind. She was like, you know what, girl? You look good, girl. I ain't nothing wrong with you. You look good. And if your husband love it, then I love it too. I was like, yeah, because Shamari, <laughs> she looked like she was about to go hood up in there. No matter who was around or how many guests was around at that little party. It looked like she was about to go in on Eva. But anyway, um, back to, oh, you said an airhead in school. You think so? I wonder. I wonder. Um, for those of y'all on Instagram, uh, Miss Hawk said Portia was probably an airhead in school, which is probably why her and uh, Shamari, or why she ain't trying to be bothered with Shamari. And that might be true. I wonder. I wonder. It's just crazy, though, how she was so... I don't know. Maybe I saw it wrong, but she seemed like literally like, you know, genuinely happy that she was on the show. But I don't know. Maybe she's scared that Shamari might bring out some things from the past, you know, bring some skeletons out. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. We shall see. <laughs> but back to Candy Girl. Um, she sits around with her assistant and uh, Todd, and she revealed to them, um, basically what she told to Nene and them about, you know, what she discussed with Carmen and Jamie. And remember, Jamie is, you know, the friend of Dennis's ex. Um, and it then got back to Portia somehow, <laughs> somehow, after they all just settled on not spilling the tea to Portia. So, who do y'all think spilled the tea? I'll wait. <laughs> I mean, okay, <laughs> because when they met up to celebrate Cynthia's opening, you know, Cynthia, she wanted to celebrate, you know, she's opening up a wine bar and it's going to be called Bailey's Wine Cellar, by the way. And I do like that name. But um, it was obvious that Portia, she was still pissed about the rumors that she heard. And Candy being Candy... She wasn't about to play that game with her. Candy told her straight up. She was like, okay, let's just get it all on the table. Big elephant in the middle of the room. So let's just talk about it. Because uh, that's what Candy is. She's a talk about it, be about it kind of person. But when, um, so she told her what they discussed about Dennis. But when she basically said, thanks to Nene, you found out about the conversation anyway. Nene was like, uh, er, uh, hello, uh, hello. You know how Nene be, <laughs> okay, let me see if I can do her face, y'all. Tell me if I did it. She'd be like, uh, uh what? <laughs> she was like, uh, hello, uh, I did not tell Portia anything. I'm like, Nene, did you or did you not? Now, y'all remember at the lunch the other day, Nene said she doesn't involve herself in other people's problems. OPP. She does not bother herself with other people's problems in the relationships. But in the green room, Portia said Nene told her. So you're going to sit right there at the table talking about, uh, hello. Uh, hello. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Nene, <hoo -wee. laughs> If it wasn't for Greg and what he going through, I'd really go in on you. But I'm going to leave you alone <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone. But, uh, yeah, in the, in the green room, Portia was like, Nene told me that um the reason why Candy didn't tell her was because she thought Portia wouldn't accept it from her. So she figured, you know, I'll tell you. <laughs> what you say, Miss Hog? <laughs> I'm on point with the facial expressions. <laughs> Nene be cracking me up, though. I love me so Nene. She be cracking me up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Portia, you know, she was still pissed, though, because, you know, the fact that Dennis, Dennis, he doesn't appreciate Candy being so messy. So it seemed like she was making it seem like, um, okay, I don't care what you did, what you said about me, but Dennis, he's upset because he don't like messy. The dude who allegedly, allegedly was cheating on his woman with you, Portia, and got tattoos of every single woman that he's dated on his body and buys everybody the same gifts. He don't like messy. Hmm. 
Okay. But <laughs> she also went on to tell us um, he's been single for quite some time now, and they are in a very committed relationship. Hmm. <laughs> okay, if you say so. But anywho, um, oh yeah, oh yeah. What do y'all think about Cynthia? Like, Cynthia acted like she was offended when Candy asked her, uh, is there any money to be made in a wine shop? And then went, then Nene was like, uh, make sure you do a little research. Now, I don't know. I guess it could have been a little shade. I guess it could have been a little shade in their comments. Um, but I think they still were concerned. Like, okay, you're going to open a wine shop. Um, uh, is there any money in a wine shop? I think so. I think so. Um, I know there's a wine shop here in Omaha that's been around for years, years. And, um, they have like, they serve sandwiches, um, cheese crackers, like all kind of fancy cheeses and fancy sandwiches and salads. And I mean, and wine. I mean, they have like a bazillion bottles of wine all around the building. You can go in and try wine. You can have a wine party or, you know, you can just go in there and buy your bottle and walk out. Or sit down with your girls, you know, or guys or whatever. And, you know, have some crackers and cheese and, you know. So, I think there's some money in it. Sure, especially some wine is expensive. Like, hundreds and thousands of dollars. I mean, shoot, for one glass. <laughs> so, I think there's some money to be made. Um, I think what they mainly was concerned about was maybe, um, maybe, you know, they just want her... They just want what's best for her. It was a little shade in there too, but hey, you know, got to take what you get. <laughs> but anywho, let me know what y'all thought about the the uh, episode. You said lo people love wine. Right, 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 right. Location, 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 Miss Hawk. Yep, yep. And as far as uh, Portia, I mean, we all know that she, you know, got pregnant. And, you know, they're supposed to be getting married. Oh, yeah, matter of fact, did y'all see the previews? The next relationship... Who was that chick that went off on Eva? <laughs> and then uh, Portia had handed Dennis a little bag. Um, and when he looked in the bag, I'm thinking that must have been the uh, birth control test. What y'all think? I think that's what that was. The birth control test that she put in that little bag. But um, whoever that lady was when they were saying, uh, not Eva. Uh, she didn't go off on Eva. Who was it that said... Don't y'all know each other? Or yeah, oh my gosh, now I can't remember. Oh, uh, was it Cynthia? Okay, yeah, Cynthia was um talking to this lady. I don't know her name though. Who that lady is that was sitting at the end of the table? And then uh, Eva was like, "Y'all, y'all, don't y'all know each other?" Or something like that. She was like, "Dang, can you let me finish what I'm trying to say?" And the whole room just got quiet, like. Okay, and I'm looking. Man, I rewinded that again. Like, what the? Who is? Who is this? <laughs> Harpo, who this woman? <laughs> I don't know who she is, but I'm definitely, definitely, definitely excited about the next episode. So I can't wait till that comes on. But y'all make sure y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode in the comments or any other cast members. Um, let me know your thoughts on Portia and her boo. Um, also on. Let me know your thoughts on uh Shamari. And Ronnie, like, as far as the open relationship thingy, you know, her going public with it, him, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's like, I guess the way I feel about it, a lot of guys would love to have an open relationship. They would love to have threesomes. They would love, I'm sure many men, including yours, probably got that on their bucket list. <laughs> Like, before I croak, before y'all put me six feet deep, I would love to have a threesome with my wife or my girlfriend or, you know, I, hey, I, hey, just keeping it 100, keeping it a buck. <laughs> but so, but he was mad because, like I said, I hope Shamari goes into further, deeper details, you know, even though he don't want her to talk about it. But, um, Ronnie... Uh, we want to know. <laughs> I want to know why was he so hurt about it? Like, what happened? Something happened. Something happened. I don't know. Was it just her messing around with women in the bedroom? 
or her stepping out, just just going nuts out there in them streets. And maybe other men were made to be involved. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, that's the new ghetto girl on the cast? Okay. Because I haven't watched uh, Michelle's... I mean, uh, yeah, Michelle. I'm so used to calling her AT Alien. I haven't watched Michelle's um, uh, live. I didn't told y'all before. When I do my reviews and I see other people have done reviews... I don't watch them. <laughs> I don't watch them because I want my reviews to totally, totally be authentic. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, not saying Michelle does. I know she, y'all know she doesn't. You know, I love Michelle. I'm subscribed to all her channels and her Instagram. But um, uh, some people, they watch other people's uh, reviews and get bits and pieces from, I mean, hey, if that's what you do, that's what you do. But I don't. What I do is I do my reviews and then because I like most of the people, you know, I, I like I follow and like a lot of people. So she's one of them. I love watching her. I watch all her videos, Miss ATL, and I watch all her videos. Um, I know who else? Sean Bradley. He did a review on it. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. I can't remember her name. The one who gets up early in the morning, like five. I cannot ever catch her lies because she, the one who drinks coffee in the big blue cup. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> oh my God. Hold up. Now I'm going to find out. Hold on. Now I got, I got to say her name. I got to look it up now. Um, five babe. Yes. I love five babe. She did one too early this morning. Like, 4.30, 5 o'clock this morning, she did a review on um, Housewives and some other people. You know, some other people did too. Um, but I always do my reviews. Whatever shows I review, I do them first. And I watch everybody else afterwards. And I'll be up there just a kicking and laughing and commenting, you know, on their review and everything. But I do that because I just like to be authentic. You know, I'm giving you all of me. <laughs> so anywho anywho you guys if you didn't like the video make sure you like the video before you leave the room make sure you share the video share it on your social platforms facebook instagram twitter um and also make sure if you're scrolling through happen to catch my live um subscribe please subscribe to my channel thank you i really really appreciate that and those of you on instagram don't forget i have two youtube channels that i would like you to subscribe to tanya knows no limit and tanya's prime time tv media reviews and again those of you watching on youtube um, my instagram is uh tanya prime time tv all one word. And uh, those of you on YouTube, you can see the link in the chat, but that's the link to our YouTube, um, to our Facebook group. So make sure y'all click that link and um, request to join the group, and I'll add you to the group. Um, and those of you on Instagram who can't see the link, uh, my Facebook group for my, you know, associated with my YouTube is Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews on Facebook. So make sure you go over there, click request to join. I'll add you to the group. So you guys, I uh, thank you all. Oh yes, I watched Duchess Kelly. Yes, I sure do. I first found about found out about him through uh, Maddie. Because I watched Maddie too. And I first found out about Maddie through Gaia and so on and so on. You know, YouTube is just a circle around the neighborhood. I'm telling you. <laughs> you walk out your door and you're going to meet somebody. And that's somebody going to bring you to somebody else. And next thing you know, y'all all on the baseball field. <laughs> all talking about the same things usually. That's how YouTube is. But um, thank you, Miss Hall. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the live. Um, again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until we meet again, in the meantime and in between time, Prime Time Squad, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Peace. <laughs>